Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Marco. I'm a regenerative medicine expert. Today's topic I'll be reviewing is what's something called cyclist syndrome. This is something that's been rampant in the cycling community for many years. There hasn't been many options and something we treat quite commonly here at Centennial Schultz Clinic. Uh, since we do see a wide, wide variety of cyclists uh, from all over, from Denver to Boulder, since there's huge cycling communities, and something we do see quite common. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dr. Markle. I'm an interventional orthopedic physician at Centennial Schultz Clinic. I'm board certified in physical medicine and rehabilitation. I'm also interventional orthopedic fellowship trained. And over the years, I've become what's uh, referred to as an expert in orthobiologics. That's an expert in stem cells, platelet-rich plasma, bone marrow constrict, microfragmented adipose tissue uh, for the use for certain orthopedic conditions. I'm also an instructor for Interventional Orthopedics Foundation, plus give talks both locally and internationally on topics such as stem cell treatments for various orthopedic conditions. So today's topic, like I said, is called cyclist syndrome. In the medical community, we call this pudendal neuralgia. Now your pudendal nerve is basically a nerve that starts in your sacrum uh, around your sit bones um, there's three separate nerves that come together to form one, one nerve. So you have your S2, S3, and S4. So those exit your sacrum and then form one nerve, and that is your pudendal nerve. That nerve starts at around your sit bones, wraps around two specific ligaments and several different muscles like your piriformis muscles, your glute muscles, and then goes all the way to the front of your, your pelvis. Um, the, is critical and innervates certain areas along the way, such as your rectum, your uh, anus, uh, also controls your uh, bladder sometimes. It can also, uh, for males, it is responsible for erections and can cause sensations um, along the, the penis. So this nerve can also get entrapped along the way. So these yellow and green lines are ligaments. So there are ligaments in your pelvic bones uh, around your sit bone. So when we sit for long periods, especially on a saddle, on a bicycle, a road bike, uh, if you're sitting for long periods, that's basically putting compression um, right up into that soft tissue where the nerve wraps around. That transmits around a tight area and eventually creates what's called a compressive neuropathy. So compressive neuropathy, if we think about other body parts that sort of have this, um, the first one that comes to mind would be carpal tunnel. So over the years, in multiple repetitive traumas over time, it starts creating some symptoms. These symptoms uh, can manifest in many different ways. They're all, all almost always brought on by sitting. Sitting is the main indicator like, oh, if sitting causes your pain and you have these certain symptoms, it there's a high probability of having prudental neuralgia. That those symptoms are pain um, in the penis, could create erectile dysfunction, pain with urination, and then a lot of these symptoms come during uh, sitting, as well as pain after intercourse or uh, pain while sitting, and numbness as well. So the numbness usually tracks along the course of the nerve, so it can go all the way from your sit bones all the way to your pubis bone, which is that bone right in the front of your pubic. Now, over the years, there's been many different treatments for this. Now, we always, as a physiatrist, one of our mainstays is always gonna be physical therapy. So physical therapy is gonna ideally help mobilize your pelvis, stretch out your glutes, stretch out your piriformis, so all the muscles around where that nerve goes, and then make sure we strengthen everything, your core, to make sure your pelvis is in tilting one way or the other, also compressing that. So you wanna work on some of the biomechanics. After that, we're talking about medications. So medications such as Neurontin, there are certain anticonvulsants that work on these. These are all medications that really work on calming down the nerve pain. Unfortunately, long-term wise, these medications are mainly symptomatic improvement. The mainstay about improving it long-term wise is gonna be avoidance. So if you're a big cyclist and want, um, sometimes you might not be able to cycle as long or as often. So modifying that. The physical therapy, the modalities, um, working around it 
is basically the best way to treat it. Now, if all these different modalities don't really get it, the next option would be more of a therapeutic treatment. So the first injection is commonly done is a steroid injection, sometimes blind, sometimes guided with image guidance. Now, steroids themselves, again, they calm down inflammation to help the symptoms of the nerve. If that doesn't help, then they result to what's called radiofrequency ablation. That's burning of the nerve. So this top left here, we have several probes going down and on the right is a live x-ray guidance of that injection where they park the needle right there. Once it's in a, the appropriate location, they put a current through that needle and it burns a nerve. So it decreases, it basically kills the nerve. So therefore the nerve stops being as painful. The problem with that, that nerve eventually grows back and then the pain can jump up dramatically from there. And eventually that can stop working. So let's try to figure out what's causing it. And that's one of the great things we do at Centennial Schultz Clinic. We look at the underlying issues of the pathology of what's causing the pudendal neuropathy. Um, you could surgically, if it's creating a compressive neuropathy or an entrapment, then the option would be, well, just remove the entrapment and it should be fine. But if you're looking at these pictures, uh, that's quite a dramatic surgery. Um, recovery, they're going all the way through your glutes that come in this way, your piriformis that goes through that way. They're dissecting all the way down and cutting those two ligaments that came across that ideally give that nerve some space. But really, if we think about it, the true, if you're primarily a cyclist, and this happens after long periods of cycling, it's probably more of a compressive neuropathy secondary to the repetitive trauma from the cycling. Now, what happens with nerves with uh, chronic compression or chronic irritation? Now, if we look at, well, what's going on, a normal nerve signal goes through a cable with insulation around it. It's similar to a coaxial cable. Now, with chronic compressive neuropathy, if we look at a model like carpal tunnel, you eventually wear down the myelin around the nerve. Now, that, as that myelin sheath or insulation gets worn down, then those symptoms, that nerve starts to short circuit. So as that nerve short circuits, then starts the pain, the numbness, and all the other symptoms that come from that. And then all the other treatments we just talked about, nothing is really targeting and really treating the underlying issue. That being loss of the myelin around the nerve. Now, from the world of regenerative medicine, now, how do, uh, one of the biggest thing is, well, how do nerves repair? Well, nerves repair through platelets or growth factors. So you use a bunch of growth factors, put these growth factors around a damaged nerve, it can help that nerve rebuild the outer coating and help the nerve function properly. So that's exactly what we do. And if we look to see if any research has been done on this, to see if it helps on human clinical trials, if we look at in carpal tunnel syndrome, there's been platelet-rich plasma treatments for carpal tunnel syndrome for many years now. I do it quite commonly. Again, it's a simple injection. I use an ultrasound to find the nerve itself, so put a small needle and put the platelets and bathe the entire nerve around it. Those growth factors eventually help rebuild the nerve and decrease the symptoms. And this research showed several hundred patients not only got symptomatic improvement, but they even looked on the electrophysiological measures where making sure that sort circuits now is actually functioning properly. Next, I've published uh, something on platelet lysate for sciatica or doctor term, we call that radiculopathy, where that nerve compression or nerve irritation is from where the nerve exits out of the spine to your leg, uh, it's a little higher up from the sacrum in your lumbar spine. If that nerve gets irritated, it creates some of those symptoms down that nerve, numbness, burning sensations, shooting pain uh, with certain positions. With Again, we took several hundred patients, did what we call platelet lysate epidurals, where we targeted around that nerve via live x-ray, saturated that nerve with the growth factors, and we are seeing long-term symptomatic improvement uh, without any real complications, so it's extremely simple. So now let's talk, 
think about how we can do this for pudendal neuropathy or cyclist syndrome. If you look at where the nerve comes from, we can easily identify that with ultrasound guidance. So with ultrasound guidance, we're looking at this top right picture. You have to know what you're looking at from an anatomical standpoint. So we have the pudendal nerve here, and further to the outside, we have the sciatic nerve, and then all the glute muscles on top of it. Well, from a treatment standpoint, this is something that's very simple. So all we do is bring a needle down into the muscle plane and saturate that nerve. So once we are able to saturate that nerve with the growth factors, we can one, give the nerve some more space with the volume, as well as those growth factors help rebuild the nerve over time. And with this simple treatment, we've been able to help a lot of patients with this, avoiding the need for chronic medications, as well as the need for more invasive and potentially very dangerous surgeries that could have huge complications. So like I mentioned, uh, I'm a member of Centennial Schultz Clinic, and if you'd like to find more about some of these treatment options for you, um, you can contact our office here or our website. Also, you can email me directly if you have any certain questions. And I appreciate the time and the effort. So if anybody enjoyed this video, as always, like, share, and follow. And if you have any Instagram or social media accounts, you can always follow me at Dr. Markle on Instagram. You can always find us on Facebook as well, uh, myself or Centennial Schultz Clinic. Um, so I appreciate everything. And if you have any questions, feel, feel free to reach out. Take care.